Hey guys and welcome back to our channel. It's Elsec and in this video we're gonna talk about Mythic C2 and we're gonna demonstrate how it works. In case you don't know, Mythic C2 is the ancestor of Partial Empire and Covenant. It's made by the same guys and it works pretty fine. With every new product they make it better and better and better. I've already installed it in my system, but I'm gonna show you how to install it on yours. The process is really simple, even though it contains multiple Docker containers, but they made a script that do the heavy lifting for us. So the only thing you need to do is to open their GitHub repository, which is on that link, I'm gonna put it in the description of that video. Go ahead, call it in the directory of your own choice, and then just inspect what's inside. And as you can see, there's uh, three scripts. Install Docker Debian, Ubuntu and Kali. In my case, I'm running that script as a, in Kali. And if you run that script with sudo user, it's gonna install all, all you need. Keep in mind that before the installation, you need to install docker.io. This can be done with sudo apt-get install docker.io. And that mythic installation relies on Docker because as you can see from here, it has eight main Docker containers. And imagine building that things from scratch and manually connecting them. It's gonna be a pain. So that script automatically installs every single Docker container and keep in mind that it's gonna take a lot of time, but it does the heavy lifting for you. After Mythic is being installed, we have that command Mythic CLI, that file, sorry, which also is made pretty nice to manage all the containers at the same time. For example, from here, we don't need to go and manually stop the container, but we can go with like sudo, mythic CLI restart, stop, start, or install agent, C2 profile, and so on, but we're gonna talk about this in just a minute. The next thing I wanna discuss is that mythic has really nice documentation there, which is called docs.mythic-c2.net, and all the process about installing, installing agents, profiles, reporting, scripting, and so on, is well explained there. So after Mythic started, we have a file, a hidden file called .env, which contains all the environment variables Mythic needs. A load IP box is the IP address that is blocked from logging in, and you can specify the whole network here. We have the project name Mythic and default operation name, operation Chimera, which are the default values. We have the open ports and that bind localhost only variable is very important because this can actually block our mythic instance from working. Of course, documentation needs to be bind only locally, but for example, the nginx server needs to be bound on interfaces. So other agents actually, or people or computers will be able to see it. So we have, as you can see, different parts. We have documentation, Hasura, mythic admin, mythic react, mythic server, so all these things are auto-generated and all of the passwords there are auto-generated as well. So keep in mind that when you install Mythic, do not immediately change that password without logging in because this can break the application and it did for me. So just copy the password, log in on your instance by navigating to the IP address. The default login is Mythic admin and then copy the password. And we are in. So when you install the Mythic from scratch, you won't be able to see that Apple, but we're gonna go over there how to how to get to there. We have different pages like active callbacks, reporting, meter mapping, screenshot credentials captured, payloads, and so on. Generate a payload, go to that payload section, action, and generate a new payload. When you install your system, you won't be able to see Windows, and that's because you will be missing C2 profiles and agents. And this can be located from the documentation here. We have available Mythic agents and available Mythic C2 profiles. We have two GitHub repositories, and installing them is pretty simple. All you have to run is that command as a sudo, using the same Mythic CLI file, and about the C2 profiles, it's quite the same command, just need to input that URL of the HTTP. So about the C2 profiles and about the agents, I need to discuss something with you. So we have three pinned agents. We have Apple, Poseidon, and AppFail. So Apple is for Windows and it's .NET Framework based one. The Poseidon is for Linux and Mac OS, as explained here. Oops, sorry and 
app fail is just click for automation JXA macOS agent. So I clicked here on the Apple one, copy the URL and just run that command right here. With the C2 profiles, we have HTTP, WebSocket, DNS, Dynamic HTTP, TCP, and SMB. What I did is just go into HTTP1, copy the URL, and use the same command as here, but just replace the URL with my HTTP agent, which is like that. And keep in mind that installing any piece of software, including HTTP agents or C2 profiles, is going to automatically restart the application. And when it's been loaded, you will be able to go ahead here, and that Windows should appear. Now click Next, Apple, because that's what we installed, and we're going to be using WinExec. We can also go with Shellcode, but for now we're going to stick to Windows Executable. Click Next, and now here's a bunch of commands that we can use. So we're going to build our payload, our exe file, based on that command. And keep in mind that the more commands you use, the harder it's going to be for AV evasion, but the more stable and functional it's going to be your shell. So the one command that we need for sure is that exit because the the payload will know how and when to exit then we can go with let's see cd cp or actually cd we do not need that cp as well let's go with i have config let's go with let's see we have even module for mimikas there Netstat, and let's go with who am I? So to add the commands, just click that arrow and click next. Then use the HTTP C2 profile that we installed, and here just call HTTP and our IP address, which is 192.168. What was it? I have config. Paste it here and keep the port 80. Of course, when you're doing real engagement, make sure that you're using SSL, but for simple use and demonstrational purposes, I'm gonna stick to port 80. Now, there's nothing much left to actually go ahead and change. These are all advanced options for proxies and so on. We have the queue date, so after this date, the payload will be inactive. We're gonna leave that as it is for now and click next. Call it apple.exe just for testing purposes and Click generate payload. Great, sorry. Now, on the first thing, nothing's gonna happen on the first click, but when you go inside payloads, open it in a new tab, we can see that it's being generated. It's gonna take some time, but we added only four commands, so it's not gonna be that much. If you add all the commands, you're gonna wait a lot longer and the payload's gonna be a lot heavier. Okay, now the payload is being generated. I'm gonna click here to download working on my box. And now use Python HTTP server to transfer into our command VM box to test our payload. I'm gonna see to downwards and do Python 3 M HTTP server 8000. Go to command VM, open up Firefox, paste the IP address. I'm oh, sorry, 192.168. Yeah, and there is the file, download it. And let's see what's gonna happen when we execute the file. I'm just gonna double click it. And nothing happened beside that black window popped up. But when we go inside our Kavi box, inside the Mythic interface, let's go into active callbacks, we see that there is an active callback. We have the ability to engage with it, see, the, see its IP address, Hostname, username, domain, operational system, and the last check-in. The last check-in is the last time the agent talked to us. And keep in mind that when executing any command, this is going to be delayed. There can be a delay because the C2 is not like a reverse shell, but uh, it's like a beacon because we are checking into that box from time to time and our command has a timeout before being executed. For example, we can interact with the box and type who am I? As you can see, the command has been submitted but did not execute 
immediately. So we have to wait a little bit. So after the last check-in passed and the timeout restarted, the command is being processed. And after the second timeout passed, the command it was executed and the result is back to us. We can do the same thing with ifconfig to see what's going to happen. Now the command has been submitted, processing, because the last check-in was there. And after the, the, the last check-in timer triggered again, the command was executed and we have the output of the command. So it's not like a reverse shell, but it's cool because all the sessions are going to be stored here and you have the ability to easily interact with every single one of them. Thank you guys for watching. This was the brief demo of how Mythic works and how to install it. Make sure that it takes a while, so be patient and that script is going to do its work. I'm leaving to you to play with different C2 profiles to see which one works better, faster and is more stable. Thank you everyone for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and if so, make sure to like it, comment, share or subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video and hope you learned something new.